It's essentially a democratic way for everybody to get an equal amount of money, having a base level for everybody. So we talked about how a community has different roles and permissions. Uh, we spoke about um, currencies and why you would want to have one. Um, you can program your currency to do a lot of things. You can pay out in your currency. Now, one way of paying out in your currency is universal basic income. And this one is a very big one because it's essentially a democratic way for everybody to get an equal amount of money continuously. And at first glance, you know, it seems unfair maybe. Why does everybody get to get free money, et cetera? But from a consequentialist point of view, from a point of view of outcomes, it actually works pretty well because, uh, for example, it's shown that uh, poor people have uh, score lower on IQ tests. Um, and that's because poverty, one of the things is it causes you to constantly multitask and try to figure out how you're going to do something. Um, not to mention that everything is relative, costs relatively more. So for example, if you uh, have to take the bus versus driving, right, then, um, you know, you might take longer and take the bus, which will impose extra costs. Or for example, if it costs you some time to switch cable providers or move from one place to another, you might not be able to do it and that will incur further costs. So a lot of times having a base level for everybody, uh, whether it's to uh, end food insecurity in the community, make sure people aren't hungry or whether it's literacy or whatever uh, is often something that the community wants to do as itself. So if you're going to have a universal basic income for your community, it does have some advantages. Um, and also people say that uh, having a UBI might be better than means tested welfare, which is what most you know, states today have, most developed countries have, because in a means tested welfare system, uh, you make sure the person's poor before you give them money. So there's sort of a cliff, a discontinuity, like a cutoff where if you make enough money, you suddenly stop, you, you lose your benefits. And so people who are close to that cutoff um, and they're offered a small paying job, they might decline that job. And that might actually be a very rational response on their part because they're gonna be making less money than if they had not taken the job. Um, so we don't want that. A lot of communities want it to be sort of Regardless, you're not going to lose your benefits, so you may as well take the job. And in that case, if people have or communities have a universal basic income, they may even get rid of things like a minimum wage law because people are, if they're making enough, if they're getting enough uh, money to live on already, so then they might take unpaid internships legally. They might uh, do apprenticeships and all kinds of things to learn, or they might go to school and learn new skills. So for all these reasons, you know, Intercoin um, helps to create the uh, technology to build a UBI. Now, here's the thing about UBI. Um, a universal basic income is becoming very popular across the world uh, for several reasons, one of which is because of the pandemic. Uh, you know, in the United States, people got $1,200 checks. Everybody got it, at least in the beginning. Um, then uh, in South Africa, they're talking uh, about phasing in a basic income in Spain. Uh, they had, you know, I think it was Spain permanent UBI. They were thinking of giving, uh, creating um, Spain moves towards a permanent basic income. We'll see if any of these actually happen, but there are issues with um, a UBI. The problem with a UBI is twofold. One is if you're trying to make it on a national level, like President Nixon tried to do, Andrew Yang ran for president trying to do it. You're trying to move a large economy to try to phase this in. And the political machine is just not set up for such a radical change. Although one could argue that uh, we do have in the United States something like this um, on the federal level. It's called the Earned Income Tax Credit. It's the largest uh, program, I think, that helps children in, in the United States. Uh, you know, in poverty, basically what it does is it's a UBI or it's a negative income tax. Uh, it gives you money back um, 
for if you're below a certain level and you make money, you know, but they call it earned because in the United States, it's, it's very, the ethos is that you have to earn it. So they put the word earned in there. Uh, anyway, that's the, uh, the UBI. It's hard to do it on a national level. Even a president like Nixon could not get it done. So people try it on a local level. They try it on a local level. These mayors, starting with Michael Tubbs in Stockton, California, all try, uh, all are, this is a movement and they're all joining to roll out UBI in their own communities. Now this could be done. And in fact, they've done pilots in their cities, right? But they have a problem uh, and they don't realize it a lot of the time. The problem is they're giving out federal money. They're giving out money that they themselves do not issue, right? So going back to my point of why you would want to have your own currency in your own uh, community is because you don't have that problem of hemorrhaging money that you cannot replenish. Um, if you give a UBI in the federal currency, people are going to go to Binance. They're going to go to um, Robinhood. They're going to go to Amazon, eBay. They're going to buy things outside of your city. It's just normal, right? You want things delivered to your house. There's great products outside your city. Why not buy it? But of course, that's not sustainable for the city itself. So how does a city able to end food insecurity inside the city while at the same time not running out of money, okay? If you just give people money, they might buy food from outside of the city and then the money leaves. So what if you could use your own currency and give out the UBI in your own currency? What would that look like? So this is the plan that we have um, put together and we're actually preparing to work with townships and cities around the world, starting with the United States, um, to help them to deploy funds. One city that we're uh, talking with people in has a $10 million fund uh, that is earmarked towards things just like this. So they would spend 20% on buying Intercoin tokens. Uh, that 20% would pay Intercoin to essentially um, deploy all of the machinery, make sure that homeless people get a phone, a basic phone and so on uh, to get the, the, distribute the, um, the UBI and, and set it up. Uh, obviously not working alone, obviously working with someone like Deloitte and uh, a company that uh, would basically, you know, do management consulting and auditing of, of the process. <laughs>